Good, e good evening, everyone, and can you hear me okay? Well, first of all, let me say this is a real honor and privilege for me to be here tonight. Um, I'm thrilled because Amy and her colleagues and CCSVI Ontario with Linda have organized tonight, and we're all thrilled to welcome Tim to Brockville. Uh, I look around here and I see people with whom I've corresponded for a year. The people who have been liberated, the people who are awaiting treatment, and the people who inspire me every day. I look around and I see courage, compassion, strength, and fight. I see people who battle their disease every day and who have the fortitude to fight the system on behalf of all those suffering. And I am humbled, and I am profoundly sorry. Uh, Amy has asked me tonight to talk a bit about the science. As you know, 55 to 75,000 Canadians live with devastating multiple sclerosis. 400 die of MS each year, and many take their own life. It is a year since I asked, along with Dr. Carolyn Bennett, for an emergency debate on CCSVI. I then asked for a take note debate in Parliament. It's a year has passed. I started a subcommittee on neurological diseases, and I had Dr. Paolo Zamboni and Dr. Marian Simka from Poland present. And a year has passed. The good news, even though a year has passed, is the scientific evidence has really increased. We have peer-reviewed articles, and there's been seven international conferences now. And many different groups from all over the world, and you don't hear this, Bulgaria, Canada, Italy, Jordan, Kuwait, the United States, and I can go on, report that the prevalence of CCSVI in those living with MS is 86% and higher. And people with MS may have one or more venous problems. They have now found 60 different problems in the veins, in the head, neck, and chest. There have been 12,500 procedures undertaken worldwide by the end of March. 50 countries are doing this. And in Canada, we can't get clinical trials. There have been clinical trials that have said this procedure is safe. We have clinical trials with that. Um, uh, Dr. Siskin, most recently in the United States. I don't want to hope longer. Every patient is different. Uh, they have different venous problems. They have a different course of MS and a different length of MS. But patients do seem to get better. About one third seem to get significantly better and one third improve and maybe a third not. That seems to be the current data. Those who get better report reduced brain fog, uh, reduced fatigue. I have people who haven't worked in many years going back to work because they don't need to sleep throughout the afternoon. Improved circulation. How many know the cold ice hands and the cold feet? Hands up. The color changes. And the hands and the feet get warm. And there's an improvement in motor skills in some cases. And there's an improvement in quality of life. And you're, some of you are looking skeptical. Um, and that's okay. I've been to seven international conferences. Pardon me, I went to five of seven. I spoke at two. And of the thousand MS patients, I'm in touch with across Canada. 300 have now been treated. And as a scientist, you know, I've been tracking them. It's important to know that clinical trials are underway in the United States. And it is time for Canada to act. Yes. 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 
we must absolutely have evidence-based medicine in Canada. That means we have to collect the evidence. There's only two ways to do it, through clinical trials or a registry. And we've been asking, I've been asking for clinical trials for a year. The other thing, and many of you know this, is we have to make sure those that have gone overseas get follow-up care. And I've been asking for this since December, because cancelling of appointments and mandatory tests are still continuing. Denial of treatment, dismissal of patients, threatening of patients is continuing. As you all know, in the past year, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research and the MS Society of Canada had a joint meeting in August, and they decided not to go ahead with clinical trials. That meeting took place behind closed doors, and there were no conflicts of interest signed. As a scientist, that's important. And then they established a, a new expert panel. But these people who are on the panel have never done diagnosis or treatment of CCSVI. How can you be an expert if you haven't done it? And they've had two meetings. What I have come to tell you tonight is I'm going to continue to fight we have to have clinical trials in this country. And I want you to know that we know MS in my family. And I did not come to this in November 2009. My cousin, who has secondary progressive MS and was a quadriplegic, on leaving an MS clinic, we were told to go to Italy and go to Israel. Italy for what would become the liberation procedure. I have followed it for three years. I will continue to fight. Um, the House rises, as Amy mentioned tonight. Well, we're not sure when it rises. I rented a car to come to be with you tonight. I don't know if I have to drive back to Ottawa tonight because I'm on midnight duty if I do, midnight to 6 a.m. But there's going to be a bill that will be announced both in the House of Commons and in the Senate. And we are going to fight for clinical trials in this country. Thank you. And I just want to finish by saying I, I implore the government, and the government of Canada, we need federal leadership to do the morally right thing and undertake clinical trials so that Canadians can get treated and followed in their own country. There is no excuse not to image. Imaging is safe. There is no excuse not to treat. Angioplasty is an established practice. MS patients are waiting. They're getting sicker. And in some cases, they are dying. The Canadian government has to fight for MS patients. Yes. In closing, I want to thank the doctors like Sandy McDonald, you all know Sandy, for their science, their compassion, their courage to be pioneers. Thank you for standing strong in the face of adversity, for doing science and hoping that eventually Evidence over egos, politics, and the various government lobbies will prevail. And my last words are always to all of you. Thank you for your courage. You inspire me every day. Thank you.